Hi, welcome to the second part in this series on how Swift GPI works. In this session, we are going to understand more about GSRP, which is nothing but a GPI Stop Recall Payment Service. Okay, so before we go into the nuances of stop and recall, let's understand uh, and do a short recap on Swift GPI. Now, a Swift GPI is nothing but a normal payment message, okay, but there is something unique about it, and that's it, the UETR number, right? It's the unique end-to-end -end transaction reference number, which is tagged to the MT103. So the same UETR is there in this message as well as in the second message. So this helps in identifying the message end to end. So this also we have seen in an earlier video that when a Swift message is received by let's say the intermediary, it actually sends an MT199 to the Swift GPI tracker. And the 199 also has the UETR reference number. So that way, since the GPI tracker has the MT199 received, it can at any point tell you where the message lies. Now, let's understand why a stop and recall message is required. Now, imagine you have sent out a courier and you have sent it out by mistake. Of course, you would want to recall it. Similarly, when you are sending out a payment message, you would like to recall the message, stop and recall the message. Maybe you had sent the message by mistake. Maybe you had sent it twice or maybe somebody has sent it fraudulently and the supervisor came to know about that and wants to now stop and recall the message. So let's see how a GSRP message helps in this. So let's have an understanding of the flow. You have the remitter, the sender, the intermediary bank, the receiver and the beneficiary and we have the SIF GPI tracker as usual. Now a sender sends out an empty 103 and currently it is at the intermediary bank. And suddenly either the remitter or the sender decides that, okay, this has been sent out by mistake, I need to stop it. So the sender sends out an empty 192 or an empty 199 message. It could be either of these two message. What happens first in the GPI tracker is that it adds this UETR number to the network cancellation list. Remember that this 192 message or the 199 message also contains the UETR number. So it adds that number to the network cancellation list, which means that it will not allow the message at, to go forward in the chain. So an intermediary cannot send it to the receiver because it has added it to its list of messages which are supposed to be canceled. The second thing the GPI tracker does, it relays the message, the same message to the intermediary bank. And then the intermediary bank then actually processes the message and responds with a 196 or a 199. Now, what does this 196 or a 199 contain? It can contain in field 79, any of these three status. PDCR, that's the initial response. It means that, hold on, this is work in progress. Let me see whether I can stop this message or not. Or it can send a CNCL, a cancellation, which means, yes, I honor your request for stop and recall. I'm going to stop this payment. I'm not letting it go forward. And third is a reject, an RJCR. An RJCR means that, sorry, I'm not able to cancel this message for whatever technical or functional reasons. So once a 196 has been uh, honored, it goes to the SIF GPI tracker and I will relay or the GPI tracker will relay it back to the sender. Now the GPI tracker also has a feature of sending out regular MT199 notification so that it can inform the sender of the status of the stop and recall. So this is the full cycle of a stop and recall message. Now, if this stop and recall is successful by the intermediary, the intermediary will then make arrangements to send the funds back to the center.
So apart from the fin message, which is MT192 or 199, or a response could be 196 and 199, there are API based messages based on which stop and recall can be done. So these are CAMT A006 and CAMT A007. And also if we have a GUI based method of uh, doing a stop and recall. And of course we have an API so that I'll be able to enquire the status of the payment. It is to be mentioned that all GSRP messages undergo the relationship management application validations. So we'll know more about it in the next session. So hope this had been a good session and on understanding GSRP messages. In the next session, we are going to understand more about Swift RMA and RMA Plus. Thank you.